Hey, Tuck. How you doing, Tucker? How you doing, bud? He's such a good boy, Tucker. Yes, you are. He's such a good mood today. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Trap. I'm stuck. Why am I stuck? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. I am getting ready to work on my drip. You think this is for you? I think everything's for you. It's not for you. Yeah, I have an extra zone left on my timers. I'll show you all this when I get to it. And I thought it would be a good idea to use that zone to run to the ostrich ferns that got planted in the, the shade garden not too terribly long ago. So I'm going through my basket here, sorting pieces out. I'm going to need this. This is what you use to attach the half inch drip line to the timers or to your faucet, whatever you're using. I don't have any strainers or anything like that, but I'm not on well water. So I don't really need to worry about that. I have tons of teas. Do you guys, anybody else out there who uses the drip? I always use tons and tons of teas. Gonna need the punch tool. This is necessary in order to make the connections to the lines. And then I need to find, where is it? I have my drip heads here. These are adjustable drip heads. And the only thing I'm missing are the adapters, which are really, really important. Here we go, quarter inch couplers. I'm going to need more than four. <laughs> so I'm gonna go do some digging. And then maybe you can hang out while I get this drip set up. Oh, and I need clamps. I'll talk about why all this matters here in just a second. Toby, you haven't said hi yet. Say hello, Toby. All right, okay, that's enough. Now, I had a bunch of stuff that I was getting ready to plant up, but I realized I haven't really talked about drip on the channel before. I've like talked about how I have things on drip, but never really the process or what I do with it. So I thought that would be a good thing to vlog. So last night, I went ahead and I took the half inch tubing and I stretched it out. I went ahead and I put it around the base of this palm tree. And then I pulled it all the way over there. As you can see, it's coiled very tightly. And as you undo it, it just looks like a big spring. So I went ahead and I did that. Pulled out way more than I need to use right now. But that's okay. I'd rather have too much over too little. That's for sure. So I'm going to go ahead and make my cuts. Get the right length. And then get that new sprinkler zone set up. Alright, so I've got a line run. Goes all the way back here behind the grill. Then it comes around the front. Goes behind the maple and... I have it basically running so it's right in front of all these different ferns. I've got my length just about how I need it. Can you see You see this? Look at them. I mean, they look better than they did before. They have new growth, but the sprinklers just don't hit over here. And since these are newly transplanted, it just seems smart to go ahead and get them onto drip. That way they'll establish well and I won't have to mess with them anymore. It's a pain getting my garden hose over here. So over here is my little area that's just a disaster i'm redoing my drip system completely next year so i'm not going to go too crazy here with what i'm doing i just don't think that that would be smart but for the time being just since i can't spend a lot of time out in the heat or in the sun watering that'll be different next year but for right now this is just going to have to do so i have two different timers here and this one has an extra zone on it so does that one this timer runs on Bluetooth, which is kind of nifty, so I can just take my phone out and make any adjustments that I need to. I cannot wait to get all this pottery over here cleaned up. I finally have an area set up to store all my extra pottery, so I'm going to be able to get this whole area cleaned up. I cannot wait to do that. This is a hose end adapter. Pretty simple to use. You just push this end in, this piece screws down, and then this piece right here grew that end right on here. You can see I've already put some plumber's tape on here. These things tend to, they leak like crazy. So make sure that this is on there nice and tight. Don't want there to be any slack. Don't want it to be on crooked. Sometimes I have to come through and make adjustments and see one of these is dripping. There's a puddle here that's not supposed to be there, so I'm gonna have to check on that in just a minute. And now we put a clamp on the end. And here's that clamp. This is very simple. Drip is very, very easy. Slide it down on one end, make a bend so that there's at least three inches. That's probably too much. Doesn't need to be that much, but it's not going to hurt to have too much. And then you just slide that up there and that's it. That's how you end the line right there. So simple. Now I'm going to tap into it, add my drip heads, and this will be done. <laughs> and to actually get it set up so that it functions as drip, this is where the punch tool comes in necessary. You can see this tool here, if it will focus, come on now, has a spiky end on it, just fits around the hose. Just push down really hard, that'll stamp a hole into it, pull it out. And you take these couplers right here. With this punch tool, you just snap those couplers right into the end. This makes it so much easier. So you can just use the punch tool to push that in there. 
that'll lock that right into place just how it needs to be. Then I take my quarter inch tubing right here. This fits right onto the top of that coupler just like so. And then I put an adjustable drip head on the end of that. Does not want to focus. I like the adjustable drip heads a lot just because, well, they're adjustable. I don't have to be too specific with making sure I'm using the right ones with these. And you can see I put that out nice and low because I don't want the water shooting into the crown of that fern. And I'm going to go ahead and do that down this entire length and that's it. Done. Pretty simple. Main thing, usually you want to make sure that you keep the drip heads where they're punched into the half inch. Generally, you don't want them any closer than about eight inches to a foot. That's just best for pressure. I've had them closer together than that before and it wasn't an issue. And uh, then I'm just going to kind of play around with the settings on them because you got to twist the tops on those to make sure the flow's right. And that's it. See? Simple. So easy. All right. So I actually, I went ahead and I moved the line from here to over there because... This isn't working. Talk more about that in a minute. I think Melnor jumped the gun with these Bluetooth timers. I have it set up over here. So I'm going to run it manually real quick, which is sometimes a little bit tricky for me to remember how to do. There we go. One, two, three, do five minutes. Make sure it turns on. Wait for the click. Okay. Heft it okay first. There we go. There's the click. Ha <laughs> ha Yes. See, so see that? That's why got to go through and check them. Looks like there are at least one of these that didn't hold on very well. This tubing is kind of flexible too. I got like discount tubing. Usually it's more firm. So this is probably going to be a theme for all of these. So I might switch out the tubing at some point, but that's the point, testing it out. So I'll reattach that. I have these set to run uh, like high. They are on very high right now because I need to saturate the area. It's pretty dry. But right now I'm going to have these set to run three times a day, early morning, early afternoon, and then just a little bit later than that, just to really make sure this whole area gets saturated because the soil dries and drains very quickly. And just for right now, probably for the next probably two to three weeks, I'll keep them running every single day unless it rains and then I'll shut them up. That's just because I really need to get these ferns established and then I'll probably dial it back to every other day. I would like to turn them down just a little bit so you can see that it looks like it's not running, but it is. It's just coming off the end of the stake. So they don't need to be up quite this high. When I wasn't looking through the viewfinder, I realized that they were up a little bit too high. But like I said, I do want to make sure they're getting heavily watered, so I might just let it be that way just for a couple of days. All right, so that was one very simple way of doing things with the half inch line. I like using half inch line, the thicker hose, because you just get more water pressure. You don't have to do things that way, though. With smaller applications, see this right here? This is a hose end fitting for a quarter inch tubing so you don't have to use one of those big thick lines and this works really well I've used these on many other things I even think I have a couple of these still set up for areas where I only needed a few drip heads and it's it works well but with those you're going to need a lot of these T's it's kind of like putting together a puzzle working with drip in general is sort of a puzzle which is kind of fun it gets frustrating for me but that's usually just dealing with the timers because I haven't found a brand that's like fully reliable I've been using them for many years. But over here, I have kind of an example of what I was talking about with this puzzle. Actually, I'll turn these on so you can see them a little bit better. Yeah, at one point, not too long ago, I had one of those Bluetooth timers over here too. And uh, broke, stopped working. Luckily, I had one of these laying around. This one though, has been giving me a little bit of trouble, but it looks like today it's decided to work. So I don't really know what that's about. So this is the zone I have set up for basically this entire bed and some pots. I'll walk you around with that once I get this turned on. There we go. So this is my zone two. It goes pretty much mostly to this Alexander Palm and a few other areas. You see all these heads in here. I have them all set up onto one line right there with the T in it. And that T goes down to one of these half inch lines down there by my feet, which look funny because they're all squished up. With that one line, I was able to come through, make a connection, make another connection and then make another connection until I have a full circle of these in here. Cause this is a really big palm tree. But this is what I was talking about, about having to sort of do your own little puzzles that way. I actually think it's more time consuming to uh, use the faucet adapters that run off the quarter inch tubing, but it's each their own. You know, maybe you only have a few plants you need to get set up and then that works just fine. But for larger applications, it's not always the most practical. This wasn't hard to do. It wasn't hard getting all of these set up like this, but 
it just seems so much easier to be able to just pop a line down into that half inch hosing. But for something like this, it was necessary. And even my pool pots, which don't look good because I told you that other timer broke and by the time I figured it out, it's too late for some of the plants, unfortunately. But same thing, this line right here runs over there. I have another head around on that side. I have two running on this mule palm, two on that one, and then a beige line that's very hard to see that <laughs> runs over there and taps into the half inch tubing. Now, I wouldn't do this if I had children around or just anybody who might trip on it, but I mean, that's not something I have to worry about. Ideally, there would be a water line tapped in right there, but champagne wishes. I just don't think that's necessary. And I could also just not have a line on here in hand water, but I'm not supposed to be out in the heat. Y'all know what's going on, the health thing, so. That's why those are set up like that. <laughs> why was I showing you the one where the timer had broken and the plants looked terrible? Here's a better example. Drip. It's amazing, isn't it? These plants look great. And there's the head in there. This one, I believe, both of these, Adenidia palms, this one, this one over here, should both have three heads in these pots. Yeah, there's one right there, another one right here, and then one that wraps around that other side. It's a lot, but they're sitting out in the sun. I almost tripped. They're sitting out in the sun, and this pavement, dark, gets hot. I mean, you can see, it's uh, pretty effective, works really well. This doesn't mean that I don't hand water still. When it gets really hot out, I still come out, make sure that these get a drink, even with the drip, because sometimes with drip, you'll end up just having zones that are moist instead of having even moisture all the way around. The whole reason we use drip, one, it's just easier. It's less time watering. And then do you have water moving directly towards the roots of the plants? Because that, that one visible right here, kind of visible, you sort of see it. So that water is going right onto the soil and then right down to the roots. And you're not getting moisture all over the foliage. Now, where I live, that's not really a problem. There aren't usually issues with fungus and whatnot if the foliage gets wet at nighttime but it's still nice because you can use less water and have more effective watering that way just want to make sure that you have them set to run long enough so that the plants are being watered thoroughly and that it's not just a light watering because then you get shallow root development and weird wonky looking plants and that kind of defeats the purpose right so once upon a time i had my drip also set up to a fertilizing system and that was amazing i spent two and a half hours fertilizing today that's too long. That's not, I don't want to keep doing that, but I want to fertilize once a week because I haven't really, like I said before, you know, it's been going on out here. I haven't really been able to take care of things, so I'd like to go ahead and, since there's like, I don't know, five weeks left that I can fertilize out here before I need to back off because of the fall temperatures, it just makes sense to get on that now and make the most of what I can with the plants. So my point there was you can hook fertilizer injection systems up to these as well. Good idea to make sure you have a strainer. I don't have any strainers they're like little screens and it's a good idea to use them i just don't have any it's a screen that goes in between the uh, male end of your timer or faucet whatever you're using and then this piece right here and that just keeps debris minerals and things like that from getting into your lines and then clogging up your drip emitters i have been asked to do videos on my drip before and i've never done it largely just because i know i'm gonna get the same question over and over and over again which is how do i set up my timers and how often do i water and I I don't know. I, I couldn't tell you. It depends on where you live, depends on your soil, depends on what kind of plants you have. Um, it's a, That's a little bit more of a tricky side to this. Sometimes I found I have to kind of play around with getting the timer set up and uh, seeing how the plants are doing. I usually start off low so they're not getting watered for very long and not too terribly often see how they do. And then I bump it up from there if necessary, which it usually is. In St. Louis, Missouri, it gets very hot here during the summer. It's been unusually cool here the past few days, which has been nice, but typically July, June, July, August, and September are pretty toasty. 90s and lower hundreds with a good amount of humidity so a lot of watering is necessary hence the drip and i was trying to think if there were any other parts that i would recommend always making sure you have on hand if you're setting up drip the couplers very necessary if especially if you're tapping into a half inch line then it's not it's a necessity you have to have those punch tool i like punch tools that will make the hole and that you can snap the uh, adapter in that piece we just talked about so you can just plop it right in i already showed you that makes it so much easier. A good punch tool does make a big difference. Something to cut your lines, also nifty to have around. Oh, and then afterthought, this half inch tubing, it's not very forgiving. It doesn't flex well. And once it has a bend or a kink in it, 
it's usually there forever. It's really hard to get it out. So it's nifty to have couplers on hand. These couplers, you just make a cut, you get the kink out, and then you rejoin the tubing together. That's very nifty. So it's always a good idea usually to have a couple of these laying around if you have a lot of angles you're working with where it might get kinked or to actually have like 90 degree angle couplers, which they do make. I don't have any to show right now, but it's that way you can get your half inch tubing to that way you can get your half inch tubing to go around sharper angles and stuff like that because like I said it doesn't have any forgiveness it doesn't bend well so those are also important things that I kind of I left out that I'm actually I forgot to mention that since I'm editing see all the editing stuff going on here oops that's wanted to make sure I remember to include that in the video because it is important these things they kink very easily and then here they are goof plugs see that goof plugs so sometimes you make a hole in the wrong spot on those half inch lines or maybe you have to move an adapter that's when you use these they've gotten kind of dirty they've been sitting out but it's just a little plug it's just like it sounds so if you mess up then you can just pop that in place of that hole so you can just have like a geyser of water shooting out of your tubing those are good to have around and then the t's i always have tons of t's around because i'm always having to find different areas i need to run new drip off of now i'm actually uh, i'm not gonna say relieved that i realized that the other timer is broken this is actually a new one looks just like that other one i don't think i'm gonna set it up though because this this is a replacement to the one that was over by the alexander palm that broke and now the other one's broken so i think i'd rather just send these back and not have to keep messing with that i have been really confused as to why these calocasias have been so incredibly thirsty and it's because the drip's not running on them and uh, i was gonna check that and i haven't gotten around to it but now i know for sure that that's not an issue I need to worry about. I was going to run a whole nother drip line back behind all of these plants and it just, it wouldn't have been fun. It's not something I wanted to do. Actually, I, I guess I am, I guess I could say relieved to just know that I just need to put a new timer on that zone. Although it'd be a lot easier to run a different drip line. And then I also was gonna talk about why I like the variable drip heads. This is a better representation of that. The adjustable dripper stakes, you see it, you see it. You know what I'm talking about. You've been looking at them this entire video. The downside to these has always been that they're kind of pricey. This little three pack right here from uh, the big box stores, like five, six bucks. That's a lot of money. They come with a uh, adapter on them, which is nice. It just snaps right off of them so you can pop it right in. But that doesn't make up for the cost. However, on Amazon, you can get a pack of 50 for $9.99. Now, I will say some of them didn't have the little adjustable heads on them, which makes them kind of useless, but I have extras of those, so it's okay. That's the only thing about these adjustable heads that I don't like is the cost, but that makes up for it right there. Otherwise, usually people would use, I used to use just emitters that you hook to a little stake and uh, it just kind of dangles over the plant. And they range from like a quarter of a gallon, a half a gallon, a gallon of water per hour, something like that. The reason I don't use those anymore is because I have so many different timers set up. As it is right now, I have 14 different zones. And if I end up with an area that is being underwatered, say we have a heat spell or something like that, with 14 different zones running, they can't run at the same time because I don't have enough water pressure. So uh, I have to have a little bit of leeway I try and space each zone out by five minutes apart. So this one runs it from seven to 7.05, then I'll set zone two to run at 7.10. So there's like a five minute gap in case I need to increase the time. But with those regular drip heads, you have to uh, bump the time up if they're not performing well enough or switch to a different head. So uh, if I needed more water in an area, I would have to increase zone one by like another five to 10 minutes or something like that. And that just becomes cumbersome when you're working with 14 different zones. It's, it's too much, it's kind of a headache. So that's why I like the adjustable heads because then I can just twist them and they'll let out more water for the duration or if we're having a wet spell then I can go through and well, if we're having a wet spell, I'll probably just set the timers to be off. And there are rain sensors you can put on these too, which is nifty. I haven't messed with any of those because I keep having to replace my timers because I can't find timers that'll last a long time. I've mostly just used Melnor and Orbit. And uh, the thing with Melnor, even though I'm not having good luck with these timers, which is a shame because I was really looking forward to doing a video on these Bluetooth timers when I first set them up. 
I was so excited about them. Like I said, they jumped the gun. They're not ready. The software was glitchy. It was neat because you could set like pictures to each zone, which was fun because it just made it easier really but the issue is like if i had zone one set for like my gingers i take a picture of my gingers and then i'd run zone one then i'd open up the app and it would say that zone two is running when it's not zone one's running but that it would show that the like that it just it wasn't working well and now just in general these things keep breaking so it's not there yet, but there are other Bluetooth timers out there. There's lots of other brands of timers out there. This is just what I've been working with. But the thing I will say about Melnor is whenever I've had issues with their timers over the years, I've called them and they've sent me replacements and their customer service has always been really great. This isn't sponsored, just saying that's been my experience. So that's just where all that stands. There's all the drip stuff. This isn't all of my drip stuff. That was just a rundown on me and my drip systems. I have tons of drip supplies over the years you build up i have like little toolboxes full of them i have entire giant totes like you know the big big like storage totes just overflowing with drip supplies but somehow i always end up having to run to the store because there's like just one part i don't have which is usually more of an issue with the uh, micro misters or the micro irrigation stakes let's talk about those now micro sprayers these little jets right here I'm really more referring to the stake right here and then the different emitters that you can put on them. Right now, this has a uh, 360, I believe is what it's called. So it will put out lots of streams of water that come down from it. Put that in there so you can see what I'm talking about. So they come down and it will broadcast more evenly to the plants as opposed to fanning out. The ones that fan out are really nifty. These types of emitters, these usually have an adjustable knob on them so you can adjust the flow rate. The different heads are very easy to change. They just screw and unscrew from this collar right here. A little bit more pricey. I mean, they're like a few bucks a pop, but these are great if you have to water a larger area. You know, you saw how big the fan spray was on those adjustable heads. This is more for if you have big garden beds or something like that really nifty for larger areas and here's like an example package of just like assorted heads that so you can get like 165 180 320 fan sprays that's nice because sometimes you have an area where you don't want everything watered or maybe you have like a sidewalk or something like that so you wouldn't want a circle spinner on it and i don't think i have any circle spinners <laughs> as i was just talking about how i have so many things I run out of the circle spinners a lot because I use a lot of them. There are large ones and small ones, and it, they, it's just like it says. It'll do a fan, a big fan area, and water everything within that circular area. That's just another way to go with drip. I use both. I use a little bit of everything, really. <laughs> hey, Tobes. How you doing, Toby? So as far as the timers are concerned, and I know I've already talked about these a whole bunch, but just in general, I do... I don't know where it went hence part of the problem right now. But I do have a plastic tote with holes cut along the side for ventilation that I try to keep over these so that they don't get drenched with water when it rains and to help keep the sun off of them, I remove them in the winter time. Also, depending on where you live in the winter time, it is usually a good idea to blow these lines out with like an air compressor. Uh, this probably won't come as a shocker to anybody, but I've never done that and I've never had a problem. But I make sure that all those heads I use are wide opened when I get these shut off and I get the lines off the timers and have everything pulled apart. So essentially, they, they're not blown out, but there's room basically for water to expand should things freeze. So yeah, it's good to keep them from being exposed to the elements. I know this looks like a mess, but it's, it's a lot. There's a lot going on here. I'm pretty sure as soon as I'm done recording this, I'll think of lots of other things that I should have mentioned about the drip irrigation. I just kind of wanted to do a rundown on what I do, setting up that new zone. And like I said, that zone set up extreme. I'm not always going to have them open, those drippers open that wide to keep things drenched. That's just for a few weeks to get those ferns established and for things are starting to warm up. So they need that right now. But otherwise, that's kind of the rundown and the gist of things. I am going to get a new timer get that zone over there fixed. And I am looking at getting a new fertilizer injector to set into these systems because like I said, two and a half hours, that's a long time to fertilize. And I had to refill my little handheld thing six times. Too much, took too long. I mean, I've been doing it for this long, so out in a while, all of a sudden I've decided that I don't want to do it by hand anymore. But for the brief period of time when I had an injector, it's like a bottle that hooked into everything and had a line that ran through it. 
that was really nifty and I miss it but they're just they're kind of pricey the one I had was really cheap so it didn't last very long if I get another one I want to go with one a little bit nicer like one of the dosatronics one of those sorts of things so I don't know there it is I was going to plant up some things in this video but it's already long enough so maybe there'll be another midweek vlog like I did last week we will see or I'll just do it next week I don't know but everything's looking pretty good out here the plants are nice and happy and healthy with the exception of the annuals like you saw before that I haven't gotten planted yet which I have mostly rounded up gotten to the gorilla cart I'm gonna throw together some hanging baskets and just start tucking these away I'll film the process it's not gonna be anything mind-blowing because the plants are I mean, they look terrible. I got them back in March and April, and they're still in their little nursery cans. They look horrible. But it'll be fun to get those planted up. And I think that should be everything. Like I said, I'm sure I'll think of more things. That's what the comment section's for, though. Comment down below any tips, tricks, suggestions. What are some things you do with your drip systems? I think it's really great that, and the nice thing about YouTube is that people can make these videos, make these plant videos, and then uh, Sometimes, hopefully, if something doesn't get covered, somebody might mention it down in the comments. So, like, things just keep going so you have more information to feed off of. We can all kind of build on things together. Don't you get in there. It's almost time to go in the house. You better not. But yeah, help keep up the info. Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions. Always appreciated. Reliable brands of timers. Let me know. Like I said, the Melnor thing, not working out for me this year, but I've used them for a long time. Haven't had issues until this year with these new Bluetooth timers. And their customer service has been pretty great. I've also used Orbit and their timers worked really well too. It's gonna do it though. My battery's dying. So I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. Again, like I had mentioned, comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions with the drip irrigation. It's always nifty to have that extra input. You can see right here, I have a sprayer. This is a wide area. One thing I didn't mention is make sure that that's not gonna spray into the crowns of plants and rot them. I should have said that. that that's, that's important. Don't, don't rot your plants out. Uh, all my social media is linked down below. I use Instagram way more than anything else. Really, that's pretty much all I use these days. Pretty much just Instagram. Look at how the sun's hitting these hydrangea flowers. It's so pretty. They're basically glowing. It's time to go. What you looking for, Tobes? What you looking for? Well, come here. Come on. Don't just stand there. Wrong way. What is wrong with you? Come on, Toby. Where is he? Where is he? Hey, Toby. Hey, Toby. Yeah. <laughs> Were you confused? Why do you take the longest way? You ran all the way down there when you could have just come. Dogs. All right. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.